What up? I'm just here to give some uh, wrestling thoughts on WWE TNA Ring of Honor. The main things I'm going to cover in this video is obviously one thing that's making a lot of news in the internet wrestling community and the YouTube wrestling community is Christian Cage's return to WWE and returning to the ECW uh, brand. Very shocking return there. De definitely did not see that coming. Uh, I'm going to give my thoughts on that, give my thoughts on uh, some recent TNA releases, and it looks like they're going to be making more cuts in the coming days and weeks, so it looks like they're going to be making some more cutbacks there. Um, probably going to get into uh, maybe some thoughts on Monday Night Raw, probably give into some uh, Ring of Honor tidbits I just want to throw out, and um, two Hall of Fame notes, so, um, news and notes I wanted to discuss. Uh, the first thing, obviously, like I said at the beginning, Christian Cage returning to WWE, and I mean, now just known as Christian, obviously, returning to WWE and returning to the ECW brand. Definitely, this was a huge shocker. Not that many people would have ever expected WWE to put him on the ECW brand, because a lot of people were expecting him to have something involving with the whole Jeff Hardy incident, or might, maybe them doing some, you know, opposite brothers thing where Jeff and Christian would be. Um, allies and Matt and um, Edge would be allies. Some people thought they would do that, and definitely, this is a definitely a good swerve for WWE to throw out for fans. Not that many people uh, would have ever expected this, like I said, and it's a good thing for the ECW brand. I know a lot of people are probably going to be bitching about this and having Christian be on the ECW brand. Basically, a lot of people saying this is a way that WWE shows they don't care about Christian. Well, they do care about Christian. I think they're actually going to utilize Christian well. Just you're going to have to be pretty patient about it. Pretty much, I would sum it up. I think the one person that summed it up the best so far was LV55. LV5454, and if you're not subscribed to him, definitely check him out. I'll put the uh, link in the description. I think he summed it up the best. You know, More fans need to be just patient about this. They'll probably utilize Christian. just have to be a little more patient about it. And I think it's a good way to get Christian back in WWE, re reintroduce him to the fans. Because you got to think, even though he was a TNA World Heavyweight Champion, you got to think the last time he was in WWE, he was nothing more than a mid-carder. Probably a little more of an upper mid carder, looking like they were almost about to put him in the main event, but he's kind of like, you know, main event mid card jobber. That was pretty much what he was doing before he left, and that's what a lot of people view, view him as. So you have to, you know, start building him up, and you can't just throw him right to the main event on SmackDown. It would have not made any sense. You got to think of another thing in WWE, WWE's perspective of fans, and especially WWE casual fans. Not that many people, you know, went out their way to see Christian. In TNA, I mean, you saw that it didn't do anything with TNA's ratings. It didn't increase the ratings or anything. Uh, people were a lot of wrestling fans were aware that Christian was in TNA, but there are fans that are WWE casual fans that only follow WWE that don't even know Christian was in TNA or he was a former World Heavyweight Champion. So you got to understand WWE's perspective. It makes sense for them putting him on there, and obviously WWE has been kind of struggling to do something to increase the ECW ratings and something like Christian being on the ECW brand could possibly increase ratings. I'm someone that don't go out doesn't go out my way to check the ECW show out, but Christian being on there, Evan Bourne being on there possibly could make me, you know, check it out. I'm not going to check it out probably every single week, but I will catch it more frequently than what I actually have ever seen it with Christian being on there. I definitely would like to see it Christian Evan Bourne match. You gotta give WWE credit for Christian returning on his first night. He was actually able to defeat Jack Swagger, and I know you know he had help from Hornswoggle, but nonetheless, that's saying something because um, Jack Swagger, whether you like it or not, and I'm not a fan of him. I do not like him at all, but you can tell that he's going to be the WWE's future. WWE has big plans for Jack Swagger. He'll probably be world champion within the next two to three years on one of the main brands. I mean, it definitely looks like that already. The WWE is building this guy up very big. And for Christian to return on his first night and defeat him, even though he had help from Hornswoggle, doesn't really hurt. It, does, it doesn't hurt. Um, Jack Swagger's credibility since obviously he had a little help from Hornswoggle and Christian beat him that way. But it still puts over Christian as well. And you just have to be a little patient about this. Give it some time. I think WWE is going to do something good out of this. Um, I expect them to possibly go the route of having Christian be on here. You'll see him feud with Jack Swagger over the ECW Championship. And uh, maybe uh, have him win it. Maybe not even have him win it. Because uh, 
At first, I thought the WWE uh, draft was going to be at uh, either you know the normal time they normally do it in mid June or late June. But obviously, I uh, just recently found out the WWE's draft is going to be on April 13th, eight days after WrestleMania. So WWE's banking on uh, the night after WrestleMania and the following week to probably do some good ratings because obviously you're going to get a good rating from the fallout of WrestleMania. And then the WWE draft is one of those shows that always gets, you know, a good rating for WWE. So with that and with that, they possibly just have him feud with Jack Swagger for a little bit up until then. And then when the WWE draft comes, draft him over to SmackDown or Raw. But I would much rather since that's only be two months of him actually being back on WWE TV, I think that would be a little too quick to have him switch over to the SmackDown or Raw roster at that point. I think, you know, you should keep him on ECW for a little time. Build him up on there. I would even have him, you know, possibly win the ECW title. Maybe have the title go back and forth with him and Jack Swagger. Uh, Christian's one of those guys that definitely put over Jack Swagger and make him seem more credible than what he are what he is now. Um, and you know, you need a, a name talent on ECW, like I said. So this is going to help the ratings out. And it's definitely a smart move by WWE. You got to say, you know, it's definitely a, a curveball thrown to us fans that expected, you know, Christian to go on the SmackDown brand and do something on there. And I don't really have no problem with it at all. Um, then um, the two uh, Hall of Fame topics that I wanted to discuss was, uh, looks like the uh, Von Erich family, the they're going to introduct the whole entire family of the Von Erichs, and possibly Dory Funk and Terry Funk, the Funk brothers, will be getting inducted. Now, I think uh, Terry Funk still has to accept the honor to get inducted. I don't think he has really accepted it quite yet, um, but hopefully he does. I think, you know, Terry Funk definitely deserves to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, Von Erichs, you know, one of the best uh, wrestling families, obviously not only one of the best wrestling families, obviously one of the most tragic family stories as far as within wrestling with the Von Erichs. And um, definitely um, like to see them, uh, definitely can't wait to see them um, Get inducted. Um, Kevin Von Erickson to be the one um, accepting the honors with uh, his daughter Lacey Von Erick, and the person that's going to induct them is Michael P.S. Hayes. And definitely a good introduction, uh, good good person to induct them into the Hall of Fame, since you know the whole Freebirds and Von Erichs feud was one of the most classic feuds in wrestling history. Now, other thing I want to discuss is uh, some you know thoughts on Raw this past Monday. Pretty decent Raw, nothing really that spectacular. I did like the um, opening of Raw where they had Ric Flair come out there, cut a promo, and Jericho interrupted him. And obviously what we've seen on Monday Night Raw, you definitely can tell the WWE is not going to do anything to punish Chris Jericho for um, what happened at the house show, which obviously I don't I, I highly doubt doubt doubted they were going to actually do anything to punish him. But you never knew if they got you know too much bad news coverage. They would have maybe done something, but obviously Jericho's in the right there, so they can't do anything to punish him anyway. And, you know, they started off kind of make it, uh, Jericho did a very good promo back to Flair. They kind of teased at the beginning, maybe, you know, doing a Jericho and Flair match, kind of probably fooling some fans that they're going to go in that route. Obviously, they're just still going the Mickey Rourke versus Chris Jericho match with Ric Flair being in the corner of Mickey Rourke. Just the reason why you're not seeing, you know, Mickey Rourke on television and with WWE and they're kind of steering a little away from it at this moment is because um, after um, they did the thing at the Golden Globes where Mickey Rourke started this and Jericho responded the following night then they did the thing on Larry King um, Mickey Rourke's uh, agent and his publicist wanted him to kind of act like he was going to at least back out of doing the Wrestlemania match so it wouldn't affect his um, wouldn't affect his uh, chances of winning the uh, Best Actor Award, which I think is really ridiculous that, you know, the Academy will just view someone, you know, Mickey Rourke, that, oh, just because he's getting involved with WWE, he's going to do something at WrestleMania. How the fuck is that going to affect giving that guy an Oscar? I mean, he did an excellent performance in that movie. Um, haven't seen all the movies that are in the Best Actor Award, but from the ones I have seen in it, and um, he definitely did a great job, and definitely I would say he deserves it, and it's really, you know, hypocritical of, you know, the, you know, Oscars, anyone not saying, we're not going to give this guy an Oscar just because he's going to do this thing with WWE, and, you know, he's getting involved with this wrestling thing. What well, makes sense? What was the fucking name of the movie he was in? The Wrestler. So it makes sense, Vince McMahon doing this, 
and I don't. I think the Oscars are the Academy is really stupid if they don't give them the award just because of that reasoning. Now, if there's someone else they think did a better acting role, that's okay. But not giving someone an award just because he's getting involved with WWE and doing something at WrestleMania is fucking stupid. So you're gonna see after the um, Oscars, which I think are on February 22nd, probably the the following night on Monday Night Raw is where they'll probably start back up with the whole Jericho and Mickey Rourke thing. And um, they'll obviously have some match or another at WrestleMania. Um, it's been some type of weird rumor saying that they might go the route of having maybe some boxing match uh, since Mickey Rourke is, um, has some past with, uh, has a past boxing experience. So they might do that. That would seem, you know, idiotic and them going that route, especially if they want to have Ric Flair in his corner. How's Ric Flair going to train someone in a boxing match? He's a professional wrestler. It will not make any sense unless he's just backing him and they do it that way. Uh, but it's one of those things that it could come off maybe good or kind of bad at WrestleMania. You know, last year when they did the Big Show and Floyd Mayweather thing, a lot of us really hated them do the idea of it, but it came off good. Maybe the Mickey Rourke and Jericho thing might be able to come off well. And, um, you know... Other than, you know, maybe putting Jericho in the world title match, which him and Cena's took on each other so much in the recent months that I don't think you'd want to see that again at WrestleMania. You'll see something fresh. And Jericho make it work. It'll be at least a maybe entertaining match. As far as anything else that happened on Raw, um, you did the, uh, they did uh, the Legacy versus Crime Time. Pretty short match there. Um, any, the other things that probably happened that are worth noting of talking about is the end of Raw, which is, uh, the Undertaker versus Randy Orton match, which, pretty solid match, what you'd expect. A lot of people obviously didn't expect the match to have an ending to it. And then DQ with the legacy coming out there, Costin um, getting involved in Undertaker wins by DQ, and then show ends with uh, Shane McMahon and Undertaker out there, and Shane hits the uh, Van Terminator to uh, Ted DiBiase with Randy Orton staring on stage. So, Solid build up to the whole uh, no no way out pay per view that's coming up this Sunday. I'm looking forward to uh, you know the chamber matches. Uh, the SmackDown one looks like it's going to be excellent. The Raw one's very lackluster, and then Shane Norton might be able to pull out something good. And they did a good ending on Raw at the end of Raw with Orton and Shane to kind of build that match up. Thankfully. The uh, Shawn Michaels and JBL feud will finally end this Sunday. I'm one of those people that's really hated this feud, and thankfully they'll finally end that. Now that's the, all the stuff I'm talking about WWE. Now I just want to get to TNA and three TNA releases that have happened, and TNA has released P.D. Williams, Jimmy Rave, and Lance Hoyt. Now the Lance Hoyt and Jimmy Rave uh, firings and releases don't really shock me, but I think they could have possibly used that tag team of Rock and Rave Infection a whole lot better than what they did. I don't think they could have been, you know, multi-tag team champions or anything like that, but it could have been a good tag team, good solid, you know, tag team instead of just using them as jobbers. They could have did some good stuff with LAX, they could have done some good stuff with Motors and Machine Guns, and maybe even a feud with them versus Beer Money could have worked out. They were one of those tag teams that I think TNA didn't really utilize well, um, even though I think Jimmy Ray will work better as a singles competitor, but um, since you didn't really have anything with Lance Hoyt, they did mesh pretty well as a tag team. I thought they could have possibly done a little better with them. Petey Williams, him getting released is kind of a shocker, because Petey Williams is one of those guys, you know, it was a foundation of TNA's X Division, and um, definitely um, disappointed that TNA has released him, because uh, P.D. Williams was a great talent. Um, don't know why TNA wanted to release him. Um, if TNA didn't just do, didn't try to do something good with him in the X Division, have him and Shelly feud with each other, that would have been excellent. Or push him a little better instead of doing this, you know, whole little P.D. Pump gimmick that they've been doing for the last God knows how many months they've been doing that. And that was one of those things that really hurt his character in TNA. And um, definitely wish the best for all three of them. As far as where I see them going, I could possibly see uh, P. Williams and Jimmy Rave. It wouldn't surprise me if they go to uh, Ring of Honor, um, especially Jimmy Rave, since Jimmy Rave was a former Ring of Honor wrestler. P. Williams, I think, will work there as well. He'll definitely fit well there. And P. Williams, I can't see him going to WWE because he's definitely a little too small for WWE. And not only that, um, his Canadian destroyer flipping pile driver, I don't think WWE would allow him to do that maneuver. Especially a lot of people in WWE might be a little too big for him to be able to pull the maneuver off anyway. So I don't think WWE would take the chance of him doing it. And um, 
that's one of those things. Not saying that he only has the Canadian Destroyer, because he actually is a very good in-ring talent. But that's the thing that really tops him and um, really helps him out is the Canadian Destroyer. After you see that, you're like, whoa, oh my god. Um, and I don't see, you know, WWE allowing him to do it. Ring of Honor, I would definitely like to see him and Jimmy Rave there. Lance Hoyt's one of those guys. you got to think maybe WWE will pick up because he is a big guy. He's actually a big guy that I view that can possibly, that can at least work decent in the ring. He's a decent big guy compared to some big guys that WWE has, especially, well, Vladimir Kozlov's not really a big guy. They just try to push him as a big guy. Lance Hoyt, I think, would work you know, fine in WWE if they would sign him. It seems like a guy they might try to pick up. In um, TNA, they're possibly going to be bringing in Stevie Richards into TNA and don't really have no problem with that. The problem I have with it is the role that they are planning to give him. They're going to plan to give him a role where he's going to pl play the therapist of Abyss, which just sounds really god-awful and sounds like it's going to flop and really not want to do it. No one's going to want to see Stevie Richards after that. Well, unless they can pull something good off there, which I highly doubt with the whole therapist thing, Stevie Richards playing the, with Abyss, maybe it could work, but I don't know. Hope You know, Stevie Richards is, you know, one of those talents, one of those veterans like, uh, you know, Val Venus that, you know, I think, you know, can work in some companies. You just can't push them too strong, but that's the problem that, you know, TNA might have, TNA tries to push some former WWE and WCW stars a little too further far than what they should be. And um, two Ring of Honor things I want to talk about is Ring of Honor is going to be taping um, their first HD net TV tapings at the end of the month in Philadelphia at the ECW Arena, or now known The Arena, on February 28th and March 1st. So definitely if you live in those areas, um, check out the uh, TV tapings. You can buy the uh, tickets at ROH, ROH and um, definitely going to be interesting how they're going to do these TV tapings because obviously they're separate from the DVD tapings. I'm wondering how this is going to, you know, how they're going to incorporate storylines into the television show um, since it's going to be kind of like an offset of the DVDs and pay-per-views and or are they going to like combine stuff in from the TV shows and storylines like that because they're going to have to have some storylines involved. You can't just have, you know, a TV show with matches. Um, you do have to have some storyline development in it. Um, you know, Ring of Honor's DVDs and pay-per-views obviously have storylines, but it's going to be kind of weird how they're going to do the storylines with the DVDs and then the TV tape and it's kind of being separate from each other. At least that's the way it kind of sounds like it's going to be. Um, but definitely it's going to be interesting to see. And speaking of the HD net TV tapings, um, if you're a musician or are or an aspiring artist, up, up and coming artist, um, if you want, you know, to get your uh, material out and you know have more people hear it, um, Ring of Honor is accepting um, people's uh, material and seeing if they like it and um, send it to rohwayne at gmail.com and send your material there and see, you know, they're pretty much asking for any original material. And if you had original material, especially um, Mark, P, Mark P, if you're watching this, I'll definitely recommend you to uh, send maybe some samples of your mixes to that uh, email address and possibly see if they want to use any of it because they are um, pretty much with the TV tape they're going to have to use all original music. Um, since obviously a lot of Ring of Honor's music is original music and it's uh, not original music, it's, you know, copyright music. Um, you know, I think they have, you know, most of the songs in Ring of Honor, but probably they need the songs for, you know, videos and stuff like that or whatever else they're going to use them for. So I uh, just wanted to get my thoughts out on the whole Christian Cage being with WWE. Just people give it time. I think it will work out. Um, the TNA releases, hopefully, P.D. Williams and Jimmy Rave. I hope, I hope the best for them. I'd like to see them in Ring of Honor. Lance Hoyt, I think he possibly could work out with, w, with uh, WWE. And just want to get my thoughts out on the uh, WWE Raw, some thoughts from that. And um, coming up uh, this Sunday, obviously, we got the No Way Out pay-per-view, so I will be giving my predictions for that probably tomorrow. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. I right, peace.